What we got going on here today is a pontoon boat repair. So pontoon boats obviously have those aluminum tubes that go underneath them and they get broken all the time. I used to work uh, right on the side of a lake with a guy and we used to fix these all the time and one of my buddies just came up and said, I got a hole in the pontoon boat, can you fix it? And I said, I can do it, I've done a lot of them. So that's what we're doing today and I'm gonna go right down step by step on how you fix a pontoon boat and some do nots that you should never do when you're attempting to fix a pontoon boat, all right? And we're obviously gonna weld it because we're welders, so um, you don't wanna try and fix it with anything but welding, really, but we're gonna get to that here in a minute, all right? So the first thing you gotta do is pull the plug in the back. It doesn't matter if you think it's dry on the inside, it will not be dry on the inside. There will be water on the inside. It's a guarantee, all right? If somebody brings you a pontoon boat, they said, all oh, the water's out of it. It's not. I almost guarantee it 100% there's going to be water. You pull the plug. You have to pull the plug anyways, because what happens when you're welding it is it builds up pressure if the plug's in, all right? And then when you get to the end of the weld, it goes poof and blows the weld out because there's pressure. So you have to take the plug out anyway you look at it because you got to relieve that pressure, all right? Dry. So what I'm going to do after I pull the plug, I'm going to find the crack. And then I'm going to hit it with a torch very lightly. You don't want to do it too much, or you can potentially melt the aluminum, right? Well, aluminum doesn't get, uh, there doesn't change colors like steel does. So you got to be very careful when you're heating it to not overheat it. But you want to heat it to where you see steam coming out, so you know it's getting rid of that moisture. You're never going to get rid of all the moisture, but you want to get rid of as, get rid of as much of it as you possibly can. So I'm going to, so uh, dry it the best you can, and then you're going to hit it with a leak test. And the leak test can sometimes push water back out again, so you might have to repeat the dry after you do the leak test. So what you're going to do is go to the plug, you're going to take a uh, compressed air source, uh, put a welding glove around it, pressurize it, don't overpressurize it, just get like 10, 15, 20 pounds per square inch in that thing to where you can see bubbles coming out of the crack to do the leak test, all right? So you're going to get like a Dawn and a pot bottle with a hole drilled on top of it, shake it up with the bubbles on it, put the air in the plug, and then that's how you're gonna do your leak test. And where the bubbles are, um, then you dry it off real quick. Once you uh, get done with the leak test, you see where the bubbles are coming out. Then you're gonna mark it with a Sharpie where it is exactly. And I, I put the Sharpie right on it because I'm gonna hit with the wire wheel next anyway, so it's gonna take the, the mark off anyways. So what happens sometimes when you hit it with the wire wheel is it moves the aluminum into the crack and you can't see it. So sometimes I take a drill and just drill up in to make a nice dent or maybe tap it with a hammer and a punch, but I don't like hitting it too, too much because it'll cause another leak somewhere else. They're very sensitive, these pontoon tubes, all right? So, all right, we got our leak test done, we marked it. Now we're gonna hit it with a wire wheel. You wanna get nice and shiny aluminum. You gotta remember these pontoon boats sit in the water so they get real nasty and uh, you wanna make them as clean as possible. And it'll look, look clean, you'll weld it, and it's not clean. And you'll see as soon as you strike an arc on it, it'll start to look real nasty. So what you wanna do is, Basically, wire wheel it the best you can, and then move on into your weld, all right? So we're going over to here. You're gonna weld it. Once you weld it, you're gonna see if there's still moisture in it. It's gonna contaminate the weld, and it's gonna look real nasty, and it'll sizzle, and steam will come out, and what you have to do after you weld it, you grind it, all right? So you weld it, it's gonna look real nasty, you grind it, and as you're grinding it, you're grinding the impurities out, all right? Repeat. So we're gonna go back up to weld again, and then you go to grind. Weld, grind, weld, grind, until you have a seal. Until you get that seal, you're gonna have to weld and grind, all right? And, and when you know, you'll know when it's not um, steaming through anymore because you won't get that porosity, you won't get that nastiness in the weld, all right? So weld and grind until you get it to stop um, having steam come out or contamination, whatever, when it stops looking nasty, basically, all right? And then you wanna weld over top of all of that. And it might not look that pretty, and I know welders don't like to have uh, welds that don't look pretty, but you really want to blend all of that in and make it not leak. That's the key, not leaking. Don't worry about it not being pretty. I know welders don't like that, but um, you want it to not leak. So once you get it to where it's not leaking, you're going to, well, you got to do a leak test first, right? Do a leak test to make sure it's not leaking. So you weld it until you think you got it, hit it with a leak test. You have no leak. Perfect. You're done, right? So don't forget to put the plug in, by the way. I put that here at the end. You don't want to not put the plug in because your boat's going to sink real quick, right? So that's kind of the order of how things happen here. And I wrote over here, pulse on pulse. So if you're doing like a mid welding process on aluminum, thin walled aluminum, like a pontoon boat, you're going to want to use pulse on pulse if you can, if you have the uh, capabilities of doing that. It depends what welder you have. 
A pulse will work, but you got to turn it way down. Spray, I don't know. I've never tried it because I've always had access to pulse on pulse. But I'm, I'm sure you could probably do it with spray if you turned it way down and just zapped it and held and zapped it, hold, zapped it, hold. I've never tried it. If you tried it, throw it in the comments. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with pulse on pulse because I have it. All right. So what we're going to do now is the do nots. There's some extremely important do nots. This one is the biggest one right here, right? If someone says, I tried to fix it myself, I put some silicone or JB Weld on it, which I don't even know why JB Weld is called JB Weld, because it's not a weld, it's just a glue, right? So let's just get rid of that name, JB Weld, it should be JB Glue, I guess. But uh, if they said they tried to fix it themselves, this is what you do. You double what you're charging right off the bat. If they said, I, I tried to silicone it, or I tried to put JB Weld on it, you say, well, you just doubled the price, right? Because you tried to fix it yourself, you didn't do it the right way. So, it's when they silicone it and JB weld it, that grind or the weld grind, weld grind, weld grind takes about I don't know five, six times as long at least because you have all that stuff in the crack, and they don't just put it on there; they jam it right in there and try and get it in the crack, and it makes it extremely hard to weld. So, do not under any circumstance. If you're watching this video and you got a hole in your pontoon boat and you think I'm going to show you how to JB weld or silicone it. That's not what we're doing here. That's that's called uh, I don't even know what the term is, but it's it's not the right way. Let's just put it that way. Don't silicone it or JV weld it if you're thinking about doing that to your pontoon boat. Matter of fact, go down, find a welder that has done these before, and say, hey, should I silicone it and JV weld it? And they're gonna freak out and say, don't bring it here if you do that. I'm just saying, double the money at least. So, also, do not wire wheel and grind. And I mean, obviously you have to do that during the process, but in the end, you're going to have some, it's not nasty looking weld, but it, it's not going to be perfect, all right? And you just have to live with that. If you try and wire wheel it and grind it to make it look pretty, you're going to cause holes, all right? So what happens is people will weld it, grind it, or and then maybe wire wheel it at the end, grind it, whatever they do. Then you hit it with a leak test again, and you've got four more leaks that you didn't have before. I'm telling you. Just leave it. Even, don't worry if it looks a little nasty. Don't make it look pretty. It will hold. I wrote that down here. Welders say that all the time. They put a weld down and they go, it'll hold when it looks terrible, right? It, I hate that. It's one of my pet peeves, right? So it will hold. I hate that saying, but with this process, that's what it is. Weld it, and as long as it's not leaking, move it down the road. Because I'm telling you, you'll just end up trying to wire wheel and grind it to make it look pretty. You'll just end up with more leaks. I'm telling you. I promise you that's what will happen. So once you get that final leak test done, put the plug in, send it down the road. So what we're going to do now is get out there, take a look at this pontoon boat. We're going to get started on this repair. So this is looking at our pontoon boat. You can see it's right back here. We're going to use a 350 Lincoln with a pipe thon push pull gun in uh, pulse on pulse mode. I haven't figured out the uh, wire feed yet. I'm going to do that on some practice pieces and then I'll show you the actual wire feed that we're going to use to weld this thing. I got a light set up over here on the weld that actually is cracked. What I'm going to do now is show you the weld and then we're going to pull the plug in the bag and see if there's any excess water in it. Alright, so this is an up close look at the weld that's cracked and it's right here that welds tore a little bit. It's usually from running into the rocks or running it up on the bank, something along those uh, lines. So. What we're going to do now is pull the plug in the back. He said that all the water is out of it. Usually there's still some water in it, but you have to pull the plug to make sure the tube isn't pressurized while you're welding it anyways, because otherwise it'll blow out at the end. So you always pull the plug, no matter what. Otherwise you're going to have a blowout at the end. So let's go pull the plug. Alright, so here we are at the plug. We're just going to, we got a bucket underneath this thing. What we're going to do is get it out. See if there's any water in it. If there's no water in it, that's good. He said it ran for about six days out of that crack in the front before it stopped, but that doesn't mean that the water's out. So we're going to pull this thing out, and like I said, you have to air, make sure there's uh, it's not airtight when you're welding it, anyways, otherwise, you'll end up with a blowout. Just in case there is water. Like I said, there's always water in it. People think that it's empty, it's just a matter of how much. We're going to let this thing flow, 
I'm going to get another bucket ready in case there's more than five gallons. I think it's going to be less than five gallons, but... Anywho, she's aired out. When it gets done draining, I'll film the bucket and show you how much water is actually in it. There's always water in it. People always think it's empty, but there's always water in these. This is a quick look at the machine settings. Got around pulse on pulse. You can see we're going 153 inches per minute for the wire feed speed. Our trim is set at 1.0. If you don't know what trim is, click on the card. It's pretty much voltage. So that's our settings. Let's take a look at our ground setup because I want to explain a little something on that. So this is a look at our ground. And you can see I got it on this flat right here. You don't want to put it anywhere where it can cause a hole because your ground can short out causing a hole. So you put it up here and you're, you're guaranteed it's not going to cause another hole in this, all right? So you want to ground directly to the tube on something that isn't pressurized, another component, a bracket, something like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test where the leak actually is. And the way we do that is you take a uh, compressed air hose, put it up in here, and I usually wrap it around like a uh, welding glove so it's not airtight but tight enough where it's not gonna it's, it's got to cause enough pressure and then we're gonna go hear it and then what we'll do is we'll soak the front of it see how it was pressurized and we're gonna soak the front of it so we can see exactly where this crack is so I gotta go find somebody to pressurize this and then we'll film the uh, the soap in the front Yep. A little more. More if you can do it. That's good. Man, it's right on the tip. Yeah, you're good. Good? Yep. Take it out? Yep. Okay, so it's actually right down here on the tip is what we got going on here. And you can see it's it's pretty bad. So it wasn't where I actually thought it was. So I'm going to clean this up here with a paper towel. And then I'm going to mark it right here with a Sharpie so we know exactly where it is. It's right here. Well, it's a good thing we did the leak test because it wasn't where I thought it was. And I'm going to zoom right in. And you can see that's got a pretty good crack in it. So what I'm going to do now is hit it with a torch, just make it hot till steam comes out. Because you don't want to blow a big hole in it. Then we're going to go ahead and clean this baby up with a stainless wire wheel that I got in my truck. And then we'll get to welding this thing. And I'm going to build it up a little bit because that's clearly right on the front of the tube. Which means they're probably beaching it a lot right there and that's probably why it got the hole. So kudos on this guy for not putting JB Weld or silicone on it and making me double the price, right? All right, so we're just gonna hit this with a little bit of heat, not a whole lot, just enough to get any kind of moisture. It looks like it's dry, but it's not. Just try and get any moisture that's in that crack out of it that we can. Definitely angled back at a pretty good angle, so we should be in pretty good shape. I'm gonna heat that up. Like I said, aluminum's tricky, so you, you never want to put too much heat on it. I'm going to let that cool. And then we're going to start cleaning it up with the wire wheel. I might even take a drill, drill into that hole a little bit, just to get the clean metal. I'm starting to see the heat come off it now. You can see the heat waves coming off. So I'm going to get out of there before I take it too far. So we're going to let it cool now. Then we'll start cleaning this baby up. All right, so I just took a drill. Whoop, a little blurry. And I drilled it out in two spots, and you can see it started coming through there on the top. What that's going to do is let me get in there with a full penetration weld and repair this thing all the way through. And then I'm going to try and do a little bit of a padding on it because I know this guy's going to ram it into the ground again. We don't want it coming back now, do we? But right now, I'm going to wire wheel around it so the drill got through it, cleaned it up, and it allows me to get good penetration. 
and it locates where the crack was. Because when I hit it with the wire wheel, sometimes the crack disappears. So I'm going to grab the stainless steel wire wheel now. We're going to wire wheel around it. It's getting nice, clean aluminum. And then we're going to start welding this thing. So here we are, we just got done wire wheeling, and you can see it opened up a little bit. When you're doing your wire wheeling, you want to make sure you don't get carried away or you'll cause different holes. And then you'll be repairing those. So I just got it to where it was pretty shiny. And what we're going to do now is weld this baby up. So let's get to welding. Alright, so this is what you're going to run into. There's still a lot of water in there. So what I'm going to do now is grind it out. And I'm just going to weld, grind, weld, grind, weld, grind. So take notice of what I'm doing. It's always got stuff in it. This was a pretty clean one and it's still nasty. So here we go. I got my light under here. Once we got the thing sealed off, I just started patting the thing up. I know it looks like a tumor. This is the only time, and I'm assuming, like I said, he said he was going to keep doing it. So what I did is I tried to build it up, and when he puts this thing into the bank, it'll hopefully, you know, grade it off a little bit. But this is the one time in welding where it'll hold counts. So I just built up a big tumor on the front of this thing. What we got to do now is leak test it. And believe it or not, I give it about 50-50 that it passes a leak test with all that weld metal on there. So let's get to the leak test. And we'll get, get done with this. I did find another spot that needs to be welded. We'll take a look at that after this. We'll weld that up for him too. All right, put it to it. Keep going. A little more. A little more. Hit it again. Hit it with what feels like it's too much. Alright, now pull it out. There was a pressure in it? Yeah. Beautiful. It passed. Alright. Alright, we did the leak test. Came out good. We built it up so you can slam into some rocks and still be okay. Never grind it or wire wheel it after it passes the leak test. If you do that, you're just begging for another leak. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if it looks terrible. This is not a good time to weld anyways. It's the one time when you weld it and you walk away and say it'll hold, it actually holds true. I hate when people say that, but in this case, it's going to hold. We're good to go. And now I'm going to show you another spot I found. We're going to weld that up real quick and then we're going to hook this up with the truck and send it down the road. So one thing I noticed when I was looking at the front of this tube is right there, if you look, it's been banging on the dock, is what I'm guessing. The other side's fine, but it's getting worn pretty good and it's going to end up hitting that um, top of the, I guess it's the platform there, that wears anymore. So 
So we'll weld that together for them so that there's a little bit of padding there so it can rub on the dock. Kind of the same application as down low there, right? We're going to build it up a little bit so that it can bang a little bit and not cause problems. Normally I wouldn't weld it if it was going, if it was part of the tube that contained the pressure, but it's not. It's just a little flat that goes up there so there's no pressure behind it. You don't want to weld anything you don't have to on a pontoon boat because you'll end up having a leak somewhere else. So I'm going to weld that up, then we're going to hook this up to the truck and get it down the road. So we just tied in the top of that tube. Went much better. It's a lot easier when there's not water behind it trying to get out. And God only knows what else from the lake. So that weld came out pretty good. That'll allow that uh, to hit the dock and not end up hitting the platform there. So this baby's all wrapped up. I'm gonna put a plug, the plug back in the uh, tube in the back. Don't forget to do that, whatever you do, or you'll be uh, bottom of the bottom of the lake or wherever you're at. So I'm gonna put that in, then we're gonna get out of here. All right, we're about to pull this thing out of here. Hope that gives you a good idea on how to fix a tube on a pontoon boat. Keep it clean, don't overgrind, and never clean it up after you're done or you'll cause some leaks that might not even have been there in the first place. So thanks for watching and subscribe to the TV Well, we're getting out of here.